My mother was Korean, my father was African American. They met in Seoul, South Korea, where my father was in the military. My mother was treated like a pariah, you know, marrying outside of her race. Uh, she fell out with her own mother because she had a biracial kid, so uh, she moved to the United States. My father and my mother got a divorce. I didn't have my father around me. I didn't have any siblings, so I was basically the only biracial kid in my whole community. I mean, I got teased. I got called every name. I didn't understand the Korean culture, so I hated everything about being a mixed race. It was hard. I had to grow up real fast. Seeing my mom just work her butt off for so many years taught me the value of hard work. Football came into my life. It started in elementary school. I was always pretty gifted. I was pretty athletic. People didn't look at me as a race or my color or my skin or, you know, what nationality I was. They looked at me as a brother. I embraced football because of that. It was my way out. It was my way to escape something that has been haunting me for a very long time. Now I can finally just be a kid and be accepted. You never want to forget where you came from. So from time to time, when I'm here in Atlanta, I like to drive down to my high school and, and just drive by and just, I get a big chuckle on my face because that's where it all started. My dreams, my aspirations, I'm very thankful of all my teachers my principles because uh, without them, uh, I wouldn't be the person who I am today. Because the struggles I went through as a kid are so deeply related to who I am genetically, it was really interesting for me to take the plunge and get an ancestry DNA test. I know nothing about my background. You know, I'm not really close to my father. Uh, I never met my grandparents on my mom's side of the family, so I'm super excited to find out uh, a little bit about my past. I sat down for a virtual meeting with Michelle Erickenbrack at Ancestry. And right off the bat, 50% Asian. You'll see here we've got 47% East Asia, but then there's this 3% Central Asia. Afghanistan, Kazakhstan, this area that's kind of sandwiched between the Middle East and Asia. You had ancestors that were from that region of the world that wow. moved further east and south into Korea. What I'm really excited to tell you about is your paternal side, the African-American side of your family. The thing that I think is fascinating about your African DNA uh -huh. is you come from eight of the nine regions in Africa that we test. Oh, really? Fascinating to me. I've never seen that before. Cameroon and Congo and Ivory Coast. That's right. You are less than 1% Great Britain, Great Scandinavia, Britain. <laughs> Finland, Northwest Russia. Finland? All right. <laughs> Less than 1% Native American. Wow. Well, my wife, Lindsay, she was more intrigued because, you know, we want to have kids, but she has no knowledge about my background at all. <laughs> so it really answers a lot of questions that I've been wanting to know for so many years about who I am, where I originated, you know, because I really didn't know. It was that identity crisis I had as a kid that led me to discover that, as hard as life was for me being biracial in Georgia, I was still lucky. Heinz Worm would have had a very different life if he lived in Korea. He would have faced an unbelievable amount of discrimination. If you were biracial, he would be treated, and I'll quote Julie Henning, like less than a dog because of the color of your skin. It was difficult enough that we were very poor but people of the community didn't make our lives any easier. I was often ridiculed and called all kinds of names, saying such as, Yankee devil, go home. There was discrimination for job opportunities, things that were written in law, that if you're biracial, for example, you cannot serve as a police officer in Korea. Growing up, my mom never really spoke to me in Korean. She didn't want me to learn it. She didn't care for it. And I can see why, because she was basically an outcast to a whole country who despised on anyone who messed with anyone outside their culture. But I was intrigued with the Korean culture more and more as I started to embrace who I was. I needed that in my life at the age of 30. Heinz Ward won the Super Bowl. 
And instead of saying, I'm going to Disney World, he said, I'm going to Korea. My mom, on the other hand, she was a little reluctant about it. And when I landed there, the media attention was just crazy. I, I didn't expect that at all. And all of a sudden, all these people who had no idea what American football was, no idea who Heinz Ward was, were starting to wear number 86 in South Korea. They probably didn't know why. The thing that I think attracted them most to Heinz was Heinz gave his mother all the glory and honor for who he was. And I think that really weighs very, very big in the Korean culture. My mom, she was like, well, they're just doing it because they want to hop on the bandwagon. I said, yeah, that, that, that could be true. But, you know, I, I thought this would be a great opportunity to use our celebrity status to make a change, to make a difference. <laughs> So while I was there, I visited the Pearl S. Buck Foundation Korea, which serves biracial children in the country. I remember Heinz looked over one kid. One kid said, what took you so long to get here? We've been waiting for you. And Heinz said, well, I've been playing football. And they had a laugh together. And from that moment on, Heinz, I think, realized what a tremendous connection he had with these biracial children who at one point in time had zero hope for a future. Heinz sat me down in his room and said, I really feel compelled to help these kids. So I would really like to start my own foundation, the Helping Hands Foundation, to help biracial kids and promote biracial equality around the world. Good to see you. A oh, long time no see. Ah. Jamie Boy, one of the first kids we helped more than a decade ago, recently visited me at work, and I was so excited to see that she's making it on her own in the U.S., happily employed as a Texas-based flight attendant. I don't know if you remember, but we had to write an essay. Yeah, yeah, we had to. And on that essay, I wrote, I wanted to be a flight attendant. Mm -hmm. So back in Korea, people would say, no, you can't do it, no. Why, because of your mixed race? Mixed, or? mixed race. So just seeing you, run that field and everybody's <laughs> screaming your name. I was like, okay, I could do it. Heinz has really changed a lot of the culture in Korea for the better. Uh, years and years of discrimination, unspoken restrictions on mixed bloods are starting to vanish now because of what Heinz has done. I'm not the next Martin Luther King <laughs> by any means, but to see a culture change and to have that, then we're taking baby steps, and I'm a part of that. So I'm proud to sit there and say that I helped change the culture to be able to accept and embrace being a mixed race.